do hope a rhinoceros doesn't come out. Yeah, the ring of fire is hard to avoid. I didn't need to do a lot with Surrey, to be honest with you. That's what uh, nine grand a year gets you. Mr. Hebb's, Hebb's going to bring home the World Cup, 100%. I gave the Dalai Lama a high five once. Hello and welcome to Under the Lid, the holiday pro cricket show with <laughs> me, Jack Brooks. And me, Catherine Siver Brunt in rainy England. And always, the podcast is, has been brought to you in partnership with The Cricketer and the marvellous PCA. And we are finally at our final episode of Season 1, Brunty. And hey. it has been a wonderful summer. I don't know about you. I've been very busy with a lot of things. I know you have as well. Yeah. Um, but I've really enjoyed this podcast, been the highlight of my week at times. Yeah, you very much deserve your little fun in the sun. If anyone's on YouTube right now, Jack is looking pretty relaxed. Sonny's hat on backwards. He's just missing a cocktail. But that yeah. will be me next week, but with an alcohol-free version. Yeah, so. correct. You need to be careful because you've uh, you've been releasing some big news, haven't you? I have. Um, the biggest news of my actual life, which you yeah. know, still is a bit weird to me, but there is a bun confirmed in the oven. A little northern bun. Um, and an exclusive for everyone. It is a boy. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, <dear>. Boy Brunt. <laughs> boy Silver Brunt. Yes, a boy <laughs> Silver Brunt, which, you know, we need some testosterone in this house. Two females, <laughs> two female dogs. So, yeah, it's, gonna, it's a bit of a surprise. Not exactly what I wanted, but, you know, we, we move, we adapt. And this is, yep. you know, it's meant to be. I just know exactly. it. Exactly. When he arrives, you'll love him all the same. And if he yes. doesn't end up being a sportsman... Then I'll be very surprised. <laughs> Lauren Winfield Hill has actually messaged me with a picture of a top she's already bought. You know, one of those baby grows, which I'm sure I'll have millions of soon, covered in shit, um, with the words baby rhino on it. I do hope a rhinoceros doesn't come out in the end, because that could be quite painful, but you know. Yeah, not to begin seems with. Seems fitting. Well, that's, it's obviously, I've known for a little while, but obviously it's amazing amazing life-changing exciting news for you and i've been on a bit of a journey with it so um yeah i our can't boys, wait to meet the, the little man next uh, early next year with my yeah, our boys need to, they need to be pals and they need to go to yorkshire cricket club together maybe big time nah. well i've still got a, i've still got a pad up there so um have you pop up there now and again yeah Lush. uh what else happen. have you managed to do anything else for the last week other than announce you having a baby? no i've I've basically been lying to everyone for the last 14 weeks. I've actually been absolutely <laughs> knackered. <laughs> knackered. Um, I don't know all the feelings. Pregnancy is weird, man. But I'm getting used to it. I'm about to join Natalie in Dub Dubai for some 40 degree heat, which I'm sure will be horrendous. Are you, go are you going out there, right? Yeah, I'm going to go support the gals while I can because th there'll be a cutoff in time where I can't fly and, and all that mm. jazz. So. I'm going to try and make the most of it while I can. Yeah, make the most of it then. Well, that's good because our guest this week is out there as well currently. Um, we'll talk about her again in a little little while. Um, but obviously I'm abroad. I'm on holiday in Greece, having a much needed end of season holiday, even though it's not quite the end of the season yet. Uh, <laughs> but the, the Surrey boys got it done last week at the Championship and I've not managed to um, meet up with them or get have any drinks with them yet. But um, yeah, it feels like I can finally relax now. Um, it's been a mad busy summer, been fantastic working with Surrey men all year. Um, and now I'm just going to work out my winter a little bit. Um, mm. But yeah, we won our last twos game last week as well, which was handy down in Warwickshire. So um, finished Hopefully on a high. Hopefully your winter will be a bit more chilled, will it? Surely. It'll definitely be a lot more chilled. I will be yeah. working, um, but yeah. it won't be as busy because obviously the season's so busy when you work in cricket that, yeah, I just need a little bit of time at home, see the family. Um, Obviously, my partner's pregnant as well, so I'll have to be useful around the house for various things. So, <laughs> um, but as it's our final episode, we would we would still like some feedback, really. Um, so, if you get on socials, hashtag under the lid, or email us at hello under the lid uk, we can still track your uh, your nice or bad comments or feedback. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll both be back for for season two. I don't know what's going to happen. We might be too busy. There might be too many nappies to change. You just don't know. Um, but let's have a little chat about our guest shall we bit of a legend another yes. legend to round off the series yes an absolute legend we obviously had one england women's legend on last week in charlotte edwards and replaced by an equally bigger legend in 
Heather Knight, um, obviously with the T20 World Cup starting soon. I believe they're heading off to Dubai tomorrow from um, Abu Dhabi. So they'll be feeling like it's getting going now. Um, so what, you know, what better way to re preview the tournament um, than to get this captain on? Looking forward to it. No, she's, a, she's a proper legend. I've worked there a little bit when I was involved with Western Storm and I've obviously met her quite a few times at various events, etc. And obviously she has been an England player for them all of my professional career, I believe. Um, so I wouldn't have seen an England women's team without her name, like yourself, in it for so long up until last year. <laughs> um, uh, I don't actually know how many tournaments she's captained England at, but she's been England captain for about eight years, which is, a, I think, four prime ministers have passed in that time. <laughs> um, so shall we get in there and have a chat? Get under the lid with Heather Knight. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello. How's it going? Congratulations, hello. babe. Ah, thanks, Trev. I love how we've all got hats on again. Um, Lottie's hair was very, very grey last week, so she went for the... <laughs> if that's not podcast, I'm going to get roasted. The no, there's no roasting I'm here. A, a little bit uh, sweaty. It's very, very odd. She was saying about... She said, Catherine, when you hit 40, which is next year, the greys will come in force, so... She was she wasn't having a hair done to the PCA award, so she was like just covering up the week before, which is um, which is a good idea. She took ten years off her, so <laughs> I don't think you quite need the hat. Would you two so, get on the colours route and just hide it? Oh yeah, or not? Oh, I'd be colouring mine until about sixty. I'd rock it, I reckon. Yeah, get old, get old gracefully. I've got plenty <laughs> of salt and pepper in mine, but I'm a man that's slightly different vibe, I reckon. But as long as you still got it, Jack, that's the main thing. Well, it is channeling back both sides, um, so I'm hanging on, <laughs> hanging on for dear life. Lovely. Um, welcome to the show, Heather. Um, first things first, how have you settled down in the UAE? Is it all going all right? Oh, it's very, very hot, Brunty. So bring your fans, <laughs> bring like ice cold. Things. Oh, my fans. You're, uh, you're pregnant as well, so obviously a uh, little less of a baby rhino, more of a fully grown rhino soon. So, um, yeah, you're going to find <laughs> I think, unfortunately. So, yeah, it'd be good to have you. It'd be, it'd be great. It's, um, yeah, been a really good training camp, actually. Really good, just getting used to the conditions, having a bit of time together with the girls after, um, obviously, not being together the last couple of months. And, yeah, just ready to get to, to Dubai now, to be honest. Um, really yeah. enjoyed training camps as much, I think, as you're a bit, little bit older. But <laughs> it has been really valuable and, yeah, ready to get going with the competition. You think the conditions will be obviously not the weather? The weather will be obviously be very similar, but will look um, the playing conditions, the wickets, etc., be the same as they've been for you to practice on in the Abu Dhabi? I think similar. Um, they've been really good, actually, um, better than I thought they'd be. They've maintained um, how good they are despite us using them for sort of ten days, so that's good. Um, big surprise been absolutely no dew. So dew's played a pretty big part in a lot of cricket in UAE, but we haven't had any. We've trained pretty much exclusively in the evening because it's so hot. Um, so we haven't had any dew, but we did. We had the sprinklers on the other night just to try and replicate it in case we could get a little bit of dew um, down in the <laughs> Sharjah. So, yeah, it's been very useful. I think wickets will be quite similar. I think Sharjah probably will be um, a little bit on the slower, lower side. We've got three of our group games there. But um, played at Dubai Stadium before and it's um, generally not, not too shabby a track. Yeah, they had the they have the fair, first fair break tournament there. I think. Yeah, they did. Twenty yeah. runs scored. A couple of years ago. Yeah, so I think a lot of our girls were in that first one. So that was that's ideal for a bit of well recent experience, I guess, because it's been a long time. Other than that, hasn't it? Jack, do you know if there's a bowler's graveyard in Dubai? I remember there being a an IPL there one year, maybe, and there being one particular ground that was a bowler's graveyard. I'm just it's, trying to. Um... Well, there's obviously the, the different countries. You've got Dubai and Abu Dhabi. I've played a lot of both of those main stadiums. Um, they're actually just good cricket surfaces. And actually, there's a bit more in it for seamers than you think. Um, Sharjah, I think, was more of a graveyard, especially for the longer format games. Um, Short boundaries? But I don't think, don't think I've played at any of the other ones. Um, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, pretty normal-sized cricket grounds, I think, but... I'd, um, so it depends how much they bring the ropes in, I guess. But they're just all good surfaces and the ball pings. Um, so yes. I'd like to think it'd be exciting 
cricket. It depends what they Decent. do with the actual decks. I mean, home advantage. I don't know what they're going to want to do with the decks, Trev. Well, obviously, it was going to be in Bangladesh, so the home team obviously aren't going to be at home, unfortunately, for them. Be raking the sh- out of them then. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly sandy. Like the, obviously, you're basically in the desert, so you seem to get sand absolutely everywhere. And, and the outfields, they are pretty good, but there's they're sort of sand based, so they're one of those that are horrible for your knees if you dive. Sort of oh, yeah. It's a handbrake on when you yeah. dive, unfortunately. Um, in your knickers and your sports bras. we we'll are fishing that out for days. Good to know. Thank you. No problem. These issues we need to discuss. Um, has it been a challenge for any of the girls um, in terms of preparations? I know from experience, night training can be a little bit of a hiccup sometimes because we just do not practice it and we barely play in the dark at home ever, maybe once, twice a year max. So, like, when you do it and you practice it, it can become a bit terrifying slash a lot of tears sometimes. Has it been has it been easy going or has it been a bit, you know, a bit of a challenge for some? Well, I don't think it would have been a very good training camp, I don't think, if there was not a few tears <laughs> and a few challenges. That's kind of part of the past. So you want to do the hard stuff now and, and then kind of be quite battle-hardened and, and ready, obviously, going into the tournament. But... Uh, our fielding coach actually had the Incredibles out with the, you know, the little bowling machine, and he had them coming out basically at ninety degrees into the sky, and it was a bit windy. Uh, it was like they were going everywhere. It was actually hilarious. I wish someone videoed it because it was like people were getting shot. Like there was ball bats about <laughs> two meters away from from people, and yeah, it was it was pretty funny actually. Um, I love it when you stood under a ball and you're like, yes, I've got, I've, I've got to it. I'm under it, and then it bounces two metres away from your life. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm not ready for this. So, I, I, yeah, I, can you remember that time in Australia? I think it was at Hamilton. No, New Zealand. Hamilton Park or whatever it's called. And I think Dino went over the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The advertising boards. <laughs> trying to <get. laughs> She got a tracking back oh. too, and then you just saw her feet go above her head and she disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I remember that was for the World Cup in New Zealand, wasn't it, a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah, we've all had not. shockers under high balls, under lights. It's not fun. And, and actually, Dubai's a bit different, so they call it the ring of fire. It's got lights basically in a big circle all around the stadium, so it's not sort of five, six floodlights you try and avoid. It's literally unavoidable. Um, obviously a bit smaller. 5,000. Yeah, the ring of fire is hard to avoid. I had my first experience of a ring of fire in um, Osh- Hang on, Perth. Man. Hang on, where's this going? Well, you know, pregnancy might give me a ring of fire. <laughs> Um, yeah, in the Optus, the new Optus Stadium, they've got a similar thing going off there. That's just horrendous, uh, the worst fielding session I've ever had. Um, so, obviously, you remember we narrowly missed out to South Africa last year in the, fi- in the same finals. How determined are you lot to put that right this time and, and win it since it's been two, since 2009, hasn't it? So, we're ready. Yeah, I think. Probably it's not, I've learned it's not that healthy to kind of want to prove a point and, and want to sort of right the wrongs, I guess, that, that happened when you, you get knocked out of a previous tournament. So I think we probably learned a lot from the team in that tournament, definitely. Um, it was obviously a pretty gutting way to go out against the host in, in that sort of close game. But I think it opened up a lot of conversations. It, it probably um, made us realise we need to do things a little bit differently and better under pressure probably made me realise I need to use people around me a little bit more um, in terms of captaincy stuff and um, make sure that as a, I guess, senior group, we're managing those big moments really well and um, getting ourselves in positions to play your best cricket in, in those games. Um, so, yeah, like, I think we're really excited. Like We've played some pretty awesome cricket this year. It's been really fun, actually. The summer was mint. Um, particularly that New Zealand series, it, it felt like... We grew a little bit as a side, like we were a bit smarter, a bit more streetwise, a lot more ruthless. And we just played loads of different people, which was a really good thing for competition and, and depth that we've got in the mm-hmm. squad, which is, is a really great place to be. Um, and yeah, I, I think the ruthlessness this summer really pleased me because we talked a lot when we went to New Zealand in March away about being a little bit more ruthless and having to adapt and be a bit smarter in different conditions. and. The conditions are going to change quite a lot out here, so we're going to have to be pretty streetwise to to what we've got to do to try and win games of cricket. So, 
yeah really excited like mm-hmm. it yeah. doesn't guarantee you but i think we, we've kind of prepared the best we possibly can we're in the best place we can be and, and now we just got to go and relax and, and try and enjoy and embrace the challenges that the world cup brings yeah and and sitting back watching the last sort of year and a bit it's been really positive i think there's been some some growing up for because of you've got a very young squad if you think about it and and I think sometimes it just happens in your career. You can learn, you can almost look five years older in one season. Sometimes the flip, the switch just flips, um, and and I, th- I feel like that's happened. And it's it's quite it's great to watch because now you want to be a part of it. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, like that Commonwealth Games. We missed you. We were very young, <laughs> and it was just like that team now. That's that's meddling easily. So it's. Yeah, it's great to see, and I feel very confident for you. And from the last summer, you guys must be, like you've just said, um, you must be feeling really confident as a team, especially trying so many things, like not being afraid to change things, go with three spinners, change the team at every other game. Like, it's been great. You must take a lot of confidence from the last summer we've had. Yeah, certainly. Like a lot of the chopping and changing stuff in the summer was around actually challenging, finding ways to challenge ourselves, like finding different things to throw at the team and, and see how they adapt a little bit. So like me and Louis sitting out at Canterbury, having our feet up and, and just letting Nat captain and, and Alex Gibbon take over in, in case something happens. And that was just kind of all about just being a bit nimble and a bit bit sort of shrugging your shoulders so something happens, you get on with it and you find a way to, to perform really. So that I think that sort of distraction training was really good for us in the summer, just getting the team to deal with things that get thrown at you in international cricket because it's chaos at times so being able to deal with that and and find ways to perform under that chaos is really important and I think seeing the girls dominate the 100 as well was really cool I think Louis challenged us at the back end of the international series to go out and boss the 100 basically and it was really brilliant to see so many of the girls doing that um, because I think we probably haven't done that in the past Um, uh, but yeah like feel ready like and I think going into these big comps you just want to keep things as consistent as as you can because just because it's a big comp you don't want to do loads of things different you don't want to become more uptight um and i'm certainly conscious of that keeping that similar sort of relaxed vibe that we have as a group um still working hard but also enjoying what we do yeah and not that i want to um touch on any of the other teams of the tournament cause, you know it's boring talking about other teams but um you guys have been for those that don't know england are drawn against bangladesh scotland mm. south africa and the west indies um, I I like that. If that was me playing, I'd I'd feel pretty good about that. Um, there's some very there's some big challenges in there. There's obviously Scotland in there who are not to be underestimated um, by anyone. And there's a sort of fresh vibey West Indies team. There isn't, but there is. I mean, Deandra, I'm just happy she's back. She brings a little bit of something the to every tournament that. she plays in. The boss, yeah. Um, how do you guys fancy your chances in 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 that uh, not quartet because you're a fifth? Um, so yeah, <laughs> how do you fancy it? Yeah, good. Like obviously our group probably is slightly different to the other one, but I think Bangladesh are going to be tricky in charger potentially if it is slow low and does turn. They've got some really good spinners. Scotland will be a bit of an unknown, and you know what it's like, Brunty sometimes playing a team that. You're expected to win and um, you're expected to dominate. It can be tricky in those world events. So, you, mm. yeah, we're going to have to sort of bring our best. It sometimes presents a little bit of a, a different challenge um, in terms of bowling. We talked a lot about that against Pakistan, actually. Like, we, we probably didn't start the summer that well against them and didn't deal with their slow spin that well and their slow seamers. Um, so, we did a lot of talking around how we're going to combat stuff. You, you can't just expect to go out and dominate. You have to have a pretty clear cap plan especially as batters so I think that'll be really useful for us against those sort of teams and you obviously like West Indies are dangerous aren't they Hayley Matthews world-class player DeAndre Dotton world-class player they can really take a game away from you so yeah it, it would just be about holding our nerve I think when when you're in those moments and and trying to just play the sort of cricket that we have try and stick to how we want to play um be streetwise as well with with obviously tournament cricket so yeah, pretty pumped. I think, I think we're playing Scotland in the day. It's the only day game we've got. So hopefully the Scots deal with, with the heat a little bit worse than we do. So it's going to be absolutely worse. So yeah, hopefully a little bit better. 
they're going to be cooking more than me. I should, I'll be in the shade or the aircon, hopefully. Um, poor old Bryce's. They've had a brilliant year, the Bryce sisters. Hats off to them. Um, got total MVP, and I'm properly happy about that because she's an absolute babe, um, Catherine Bryce. And, um, and under the lid, um, what should we say? Guest. There we go. So, yes, fantastic. Um, right, one more question for me before we hand over to the head of entertainment. Um, in the squad, I feel like you're going to say Soph. So if it is Soph, that's fine. Say Soph, but then say one other. Um, who do you think will play a crucial role for England? Can be yourself. Um, it's nice to <laughs> big up yourself. Um, given the conditions in this World Cup for England. Oh, good question. Oh, Ooh, good question. Um, yeah, look, obviously the spinners are going to be key. Like... Sarah Glenn has been so good for us this last, well, God knows how long. And she obviously bowls with that pace and skid into into the pitch. And, and that can be really tricky here. Keeps the stumps in, game, in the game a lot. Um, and she's a huge part of the group, as you know, Brunty. She's had a vibe. And, uh, she's actually got hair extensions this trip. So she's she's been getting a little bit hot. Um, she's got an extra... Tell her to take them out. She's been weighing her down. Got an extra metre on her, on her, on her mane at the back. Um, and she she did actually have to go buy lemons yesterday. To they've gone a bit sort of orange at the bottom. I think picked up some fake, <laughs> fake tan, so she's had to go buy some lemons and rub that into her hair. So hopefully that won't uh, affect her bowling at all, which I'm sure it won't. Um, so she's going to be key, and and I think hitting down the ground as batters is going to be really key. Like so, aside like the obvious Natty and and others, um, I think Maya Boucher suits her game really well. She hits so strongly down the ground. It's a, a huge strength of hers and that's going to be really key on, on these wickets. So, yeah, I think obviously opening up with Danny Wyatt, who's one of our best T20 players of all time, they're going to be a really good partnership. Ev, since you've been captain, uh, I think eight years, I'm not sure exactly how many tournaments you've skipped at. You might know, since you've actually done it. Um... <laughs> She's not a badger. <laughs> I can actually tell you um, off the top of my head. I don't have to count them up. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Couldn't figure it out. Um, do you prepare teams differently as time's gone on? Or has it been quite similar? And obviously, you've got John Lewis now as coach. Do you sit down together? Like, how does it all work? Just for our listeners, more so than than Branty and I. So, planning for this tournament probably started eighteen months, two years ago. Um, obviously, the tournament was meant to be in Bangladesh. So, yeah, we basically looked at what you need to be successful in Bangladesh. What skills you're going to need as batters, as bowlers what sort of cricketers we're going to need. Um, you're obviously also playing cricket at that time, so you, you kind of got one eye on what, you, what you're doing and, and one eye on the future as well. But we looked quite deeply into to the skills we're going to need. Um, so like around batting, generally slower, lower wickets, you're going to have to hit the ball hard into space where it's hard to hit boundaries. So um, pocket and trudge, as our batting coach likes to speak about a lot. So sort of framing it to the batters, the skills we're going to need and trying to develop those. Um, getting bowlers really accurate, so accuracy is, is really at premium over here. Um, attacking the stumps, having your sort of cutters into the wickets and your variations. So little bits like that, trying to upskill the players you've got and and then trying to look at, I guess, the broader squad um, who you potentially might see going to that tournament and, and who you need to give opportunities to, um, whether that's young players that you need to get a few caps into and experience into to help them grow and develop and, and be ready come that tournament um, and that's obviously something we did quite a lot this summer playing around with, with different teams and, and trying different combinations of things and then I guess as you get closer you, you sort of narrow down your squad um, we picked the squad sort of mid hundred um, sat down with, with John and Jonathan Finch um, and also Liam Sanders has, has input as our head of um, data I guess um, but yeah me and John work really close in, in terms of just chatting around how we want the team to play how we want things to be like how players are getting on um, yeah and what that tournament looks like and I think I, I guess the question about has things changed over time probably there's so much more cricket now so I actually think you have kind of less of a lead in to concentrate on tournaments which I don't think is a bad thing actually so obviously for this tournament we had the 100 and, and then you, you're looking at two weeks off and 
I'm, I'm really keen to maximise my time off at the moment. I think it's really important to get a bit of headspace away from cricket to keep me fresh. Um, so that two weeks was spent not thinking too much about cricket, to be honest. And, and then obviously we've had this this uh, camp here in Abu Dhabi to, to try and get ourselves ready. So, yeah, I think probably in previous years, like way back, um, with Brunty and World Cups, we had a, a sort of 10 week training block at home to lead up into tournaments. And obviously, that gives you more time to get ready, but also it gives you more time to think and to put so much more on those those tournaments, I think. So, actually, I, I think now you, you're just kind of so used to going from tournament to tournament, big game to big game. So, you, you kind of just don't think about it too much, actually. Maybe that's just because I'm more experienced and experienced more of these, these things. But, um, yeah, I think that sort of freshness is is probably the main thing, actually. Yeah, oh, wicked. Now, because of the the way that women's games develop with so many big tournaments, a lot more pressurised games. It's not just now playing for England where you get a lot of pressure, is there? Do you think that's um, made it more difficult to pick your squad of girls that you take over there? Because you obviously got such a, a dearth of talent in this country now, haven't you? And you've, like you said, then you you had to change of venues and country for a tournament. That, you know, if you're a spanner in the works, no doubt, with who you actually wanted to select as well, I, I imagine. Yeah, it's getting much harder. Like, it's getting really hard to pick squads, really hard to pick 11s. And that's because of the domestic structure. How that's given so many more players a platform, enable players to grow a lot more. Um, like, you look at Lauren Filer. I know you've worked closely with her, Jack, over the last couple of years. And she was working at Tesco, stacking shells a few years ago. And, and now uh, she's, she's developed so fast in, in terms of, her bowling like she's been really hard to leave out of the squad obviously um and she's been here training with us in Abu Dhabi actually and has, again been really impressive and has a really good future in this side so yeah she's someone that has developed so fast and I think the domestic structures is, is kind of helping with that and, and just having access to high quality coaches time to train rather than finishing your shift on the tills and, and then head into the nets so um yeah that's, that's <laughs> certainly strengthened that depth that we have in in this country which is is a really cool thing to see yeah massive it gives you perspective when you've got those uh, time on the tills to then appreciate long spells and, and long days of cricket actually are still to be enjoyed as well um it's crazy actually just touching on lauren quickly like she didn't realize how good she was she had no idea how good she could be she just knew that she could bowl quite quick at times she liked bowling bounces inside and um she's quite happy go lucky but yeah, she had no idea. I was like, straight away, I was like, you're going to play for England and be probably dominant probably for a long time, but that's for another day. Um, I still like bowling bounces, on... by the way. She hasn't lost that. Before. Yeah, I bet she does, yeah. <laughs> I lost count of how many of the girls she put on her ass uh, in the winter at Bristol Indoor School. Um, you mentioned about Lauren working in Tesco's, wherever it was. I think we actually share, you and I, um, a job from our team. So I used to work in a a care home my first ever job was in a care home I believe you worked in a care home when you were a teenager didn't you I did I was uh, head chef for the evening <laughs> for the evening meal. Well, I was head chef of one there was no one else so I, yeah after school after sixth form I used to go work in the kitchen at my um, care home that's just down the road from the school um, used to cook an evening meal for 20 residents um, yeah it was it was good fun like I, I really enjoyed it, actually like, I used to get asked uh, the same question about 50 times a shift by the same lady asking me where the toilet was um but it was it was really nice I, I think it, a really good grounding actually and I kind of have a lot of perspective on on things I think now because of sort of where I've come from and going through uni and sort of having to do a lot of things outside of cricket because obviously I only became professional sort of midway through my career but um yeah. yeah it was it was it was great I loved it and uh, I got paid five pound an hour the grand old total of five pound an hour uh, 20 pound a shift and I used to uh, sort of collect the money and, and sort of knew the value of value of buying things. Um, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was good times, so I really enjoyed it there. Sounds like you had more responsibilities than me because I was not a head chef. I was a dish pig and general dog's body. And I, I left because they kept trying to make me clean toilets and I was like, nah, this isn't for me. See you later. Um, going back to the World Cup squad, so talk to us about your current squad, if anyone you can pinpoint for... You know, practical joker. Who's the one you that definitely likes to take themselves off, just away from the group, and just have some alone time or me time, if you like to call it? Um, who are the ones that really keep people going along? And there must be some interesting characters in that group out there with you at the minute. 
yeah, we've got some brilliant cra- characters. We're a really tight knit group, actually. Oh, not not many practical jokers, actually. I, I think way back when it used to be me before I was captain. Um, <laughs> I used to enjoy the odd practical joke. I got Laura Marshall. Like, bag. Yeah, bag. It was that was my nickname, affectionate nickname. Um, <laughs> I actually got Laura. I got Laura Marsh once. Do you remember that Brunty in New Zealand? I I played. It was quite bad. I played on Laura's anxiety that we were going to be in an earthquake. <laughs> so it was back when we shared rooms, and Laura Marsh was sharing with Jenny Brown. So I got Jenny in on it, and basically I snuck in into the room and hid for about an hour and a half. I was sort of hid behind Jenny Gunn's bed, underneath the bed. And then finally, when they went to bed, I, I snuck round to Laura's bed really quietly. And then it looked pretty sturdy, to be fair. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was on wheels. And I pulled it really hard, trying to convince her there was an earthquake. And ended up going, like, flying across one side of the room. And I had to go with it. <laughs> and I, I did convince her she was in an earthquake. Um, but, yeah, I, I felt pretty bad, actually, because she was pretty nervous. She had, like, a, a bag pack, didn't she, Brunty? A, a sort of getaway bag. <laughs> In case you had to evacuate, <laughs> evacuate the hotel, um, I pranked Jenny yeah. once and once only, never again. Don't prank Jenny. Dan. She's crazy. No. Did you? Did you jump out there? Didn't you? I jumped. I went rah like that, and she got the. She was watching TV, and she had the remote in her hand, and within a millisecond, just threw the remote at me <laughs> as hard as possible, and I like ducked, and it smashed on the cupboard and I was just like and I just <laughs> like backtracked out the room <laughs> and her face I swear I've never seen a scarier face she not s- someone not to be messed with no she doesn't no. make surprises does Jenny again uh, okay definitely not um, she doesn't like much <laughs> no but uh, Danny Wyatt's the, the bringer of good vibes for sure she's same age as me but she's got the energy of a of an 18 year old she's um always bringing the sort of happy go lucky attitude she's been organizing paddle for a lot of the girls which has been really good fun um sarah glenn is, is obviously a bit of a joker and brings yeah lots of reasons to take the f- out of her <laughs> to be honest um but uh, i think the whole group like sphere dunkley is probably one of the most caring teammates you'll ever meet she's um brilliant at, at looking after people when they're having a bad time and, and things like that so yeah we've got a really nice group like it, it feels like really tight knit really nice balance of experience not age brunty experience and and that sort of youth and, and energy and stuff so yeah it's good it's a good place to be we we enjoy spending lots of time with each other doing different things um i think we've got a bit of a social bit of karaoke planned tonight unfortunately from oh, because um uh, yeah i have to have about 12 beers to do karaoke so i don't think i'll be stepping up later Ugh. um but yeah it, it should be good fun um we, we get a lot of tone deaf people in there I was going to say, is there anybody who's actually a decent singer in that squad? Danny Gibson's pretty good, actually. Um, a karaoke yeah. song is Baggy Trousers, a bit of an unusual one. Oh, no, make us sing Whitney. Uh, so that's quite, uh, quite fun to watch. Um, yeah. Who else is good? Amy Jones likes to sing A Slow Number. Uh, Jar of Hearts, okay. so, oh, I can't remember who sings it. Yeah. Do you, you know them too, don't you? So that's not Lana Del Rey, is it? Not Lana Del Rey. Now, away from captaincy, talk about Heather Knight, the batsman. How are you feeling about your, your game going into the World Cup? Because you, you know, it seems to me like you've been informed your whole career. But um, how are you feeling about your own your own game? Yeah, really good, actually. Like I've, I've probably had one of the best years of my career in terms of T20. Just feel like I'm yeah. really settled with how I want to play. Um, I really wanted to enjoy the 100 and, and really wanted to be quite free I think that's quite important for me as a batter if I, I get a bit tentative and lose my intent is probably the worst worst thing for me so in the 100 I was really conscious that I wanted to go and dominate and, and be really free and, and take the game on and you also have a bit less time in, in that format so it, it kind of uh, leans towards that as well but um, yeah I feel really good like uh, I really enjoyed um, being able to contribute a bit more um, during the 100 I don't think I've, I've had a, a mega tournament where I've really gone on and dominated till this year so yeah I feel good like I feel in a really good place to play in different conditions as well like uh, um, pride myself on, on how I play spin and how I'm gonna adapt to 
to different situations that I'm in. I, I love that challenge of, of trying to work out what you have to do on a different surface, how you're going to be effective. Um, I think something that is really important in, in World Cups, having that, I guess, experience to, to try and adapt and, and just get the team over the line. So, yeah, I feel good, feeling in a really good place and just got to keep the same mindset that I've had, I guess, recently to, to take into the tournament. Wicked. Have you um have you your bowling? Are you still working on your bowling? Because oh, obviously now really. you've got three of the best spinners in the world. You just feel like mm, I may not be needed, but get yourself on now and again, can't you? Uh, it's taken a bit of a back seat to be honest. I, I've hardly bowled the last um sort of three four months. I haven't really need needed to, which has been quite nice actually. You get to to watch a bit more and and have conversations actually, which I enjoy a lot more than bowling. Actually, I never really enjoyed bowling. I always know what really? I, I always know what I want to do, but I can never quite have the skill set to be able to do what I want <laughs> and obviously now we've got some brilliant spinners so that's quite happy. I reckon a good time to bowl would be seven you've just got a big gut a, a big <laughs> yes what a great <laughs> over when the when a big gun comes in I don't know like Alyssa Healy's first ball or Wolfart's first ball and Heather's just like ah, come on then and they just want to just you know they want to get their driver out and just hit it as far as possible Next minute, away swing. Yeah, swing it past the outside edge. See you later. And that's all. Of, that's that's all she wrote. I feel like that could work. Um, that was, you know, the postman, and they've just delivered my book. I'm bringing it out to the uh, UAE. Hev, if you want to have a little borrow, there is a little book in rec- going actually. Um, there's a few yeah, I think really this is going to be a cracker. What's it about? about? So that uh, looks aggressive. That book. It's yeah, thick. It looks red. I think it's about a spy in World War Two. Okay. It's not really my cup of tea. I well, normally like more of like a death sort of mm, yeah. vibe. Yeah, not that no, have, That is me. Nat's told me I need to get off my phone and into a book a bit more. So I can recommend, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> anyway, back to you. Um, you've been England captain for, as Jack says, about eight years now. Many, many tournaments. How would you sum up your time as captain till now? Oh, God, oh. that's a mahusive question. Um, mahusive. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would I sum it up? Well, I think just like how I'd sum up captaincy, really. Like challenging, rewarding, um, like lonely at times, but really fun at times as well. And I guess the attitude I probably always have in my cricket and probably one I've had with my captaincy as well is is always trying to get little bits that you can get better. I think I've probably become a better captain the last couple of years. I think COVID was pretty rubbish time, to be honest, to be any sort of captain or, or leader. It was, it was a really sort of weird time, like players lost a lot of perspective. It was, yeah, really tough time to captain and, and probably since... I've come out of that. I've, I've tried to try to change my style a little bit. Try and be more of a what the team needs sort of captain. And I think in COVID it was just more about survival and, and just kind of get, getting everyone through. But I think the last couple of years I've, I've sort of obviously tried to use the senior players a little bit more around me. We've obviously got that experience in the team now, and, and players that have a huge amount of experience and, and captaincy experience in in regions and things like that. So. Yeah, trying to use those girls around me, trying to um, bring the best out of them as well and try and take the load off me, I think, at times has, has been quite useful. So, um, yeah, was that a short enough answer? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a big question, isn't it? Um, has it been hard to, like, take the load off with, you know, I would imagine, I have no idea what it's like, but I imagine you want to you wanna do the best you can, obviously, and... And if you sort of offer that to others, it sort of goes out of your control a bit. Is it being really hard to, like, as you say, you've now got a lot of leaders to sort of let them in and 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 sort of give a bit of the weight to them? Like, it's a hard job, and like you said, a lonely job at times, and not feeling like you have to do everything. And like, I imagine it's you know, it's a big deal because you win, lose, or draw. It, a lot of the time, it comes back to yourself and. You know, you have to answer those questions. So has it been nice being able to lean on that, but also in more recent times, you know, Eccles um, and Co. Yeah, Amy Amy Jones as well. I think she's been oh yeah yeah, yeah. really key the last couple of years in in terms of her growing and trusting her voice. I guess with the amount of cricket that she has played and how people view her in the side, 
Um, I wouldn't say it's been super hard. I think it's probably given me more time to do the big things, to to kind of have those really key conversations with your bowlers. I think that's a, the kind of cornerstone of, of what you do as captain, your relationships with your bowlers, how you work together, how you help them, how you try and get the best out of them. Um is is the biggest part of the job for me and that decision making process around that. So uh, I think I've I've really enjoyed it trying to use Nat Amy Soph in particular a lot more there in the, the kind of strategy group that that I started a couple of years ago post that South Africa World Cup actually. So yeah it's 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 been really good and just them having that clarity and, and ownership of the team I think has has seen a lot of growth in those girls um which has been quite yeah. good to see. And yeah, it just, just feels like a, a really good place now. I think we're a bit more open to just having like really honest conversations, challenging each other, trying to get the best for the team and, and trying to um, push our way forward, I guess, in terms of how we want to do things, that sort of mantra. I think that coincided a lot with younger players coming into the team as well. And I love that side of captaincy, the, the sort of impact you can have on a young player earlier in their career, how you can help them. Um, how you can see them develop so fast because it's it's just mad how quickly these young players can mm. kind of realise their potential <laughs> once they realise what they can do and, and how good they can be like you're talking about with, with Lauren earlier Jack um, once they kind of know that um, they develop at an absolute rate of knots and, and growing confidence hugely so I find that side of it really really rewarding and really a big part I guess of, of keeping me motivated probably when you've captained for so long it, it can get a bit samey so trying to help those younger players realise their potential has, has been hugely re- rewarding for me. Mm, definitely. I imagine if I ever went into coaching uh, as a coach, that would be the best bit about it is mentoring, sort of giving them the heads up, but also just like guiding and helping and um, watching them flourish because of what you know they're capable of. Is 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 pretty much the drug as to why you do all those miles in it, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you guess where you get your reward from. Um, when you, I remember when being a young player, the people I looked to, the ones that made me feel good, but actually could guide me and show me how it's done, really. Um, and they're the ones you look back on fondly with. And so, yeah, that person actually cared, but knew what they were talking about. They saw something I didn't realise I had. Um, and that's what I get a buzz off out now, coaching, whether it be boys, girls, um, school kids or pros. Like It's forming that relationship and getting that trust with people and, going on to see them improve which you know you can see the their face light up when they do something they've been working on and you just know that actually you're helping someone so yeah it's great going watching them do a three-peat sorry i didn't need to do a lot with sorry to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> can't say much credit for that one jack <laughs> mm, not really there you go take the um, ball in those stumps <laughs> <laughs> obvious so last last week's guest charlotte edwards um our guest learn about her sort of abrupt uh, leave from from the game, um, which meant a pretty much immediate captaincy for you, sort of like, there you go, handle it. Um, did, was there any tips shared from, uh, or any words shared with from Lottie to yourself about, you know, advice or how how you might handle that deal? Or was it just because of the place what had happened to her and the place she was in, was it pretty much just silence? Here you go, have a go. No, I remember <laughs> getting a t- text from Lot um, once it got announced I was going to be captain. Just around, like, be yourself and, and be honest. That's that's all you can do. It's the best job in the world. Um, but, yeah, it was it was kind of a weird time. I'm sure you talked about it with, with Lottie on the, the pod last week. But it was kind of, yeah, a little bit awkward, I guess. Like, it was, it was a bit of a hard obviously Lottie was didn't want to leave and um it was pretty hard on Lot and I was pretty close with her and things like that so it was, it was kind of a little bit awkward I guess but yeah she's always been like super supportive and sometimes ask her about younger players that come in from the Vipers like what they're like and um what she thinks about how to get the best out of them and, and stuff like that so yeah she's she was obviously a, a really good captain and you, you kind of take on the things that you think are really good in in captains and coaches that you've had, I guess, and um, try and also do things in your own way, um, what you think the team needs to do. Defo. You've always got to sort of take, I guess that's being a coach, isn't it too, Jack? You 
learn so much over your 10, 15, 20 years that you take the stuff, the, the golden nuggets, and then also put a bit of your own salt and pepper on top of that um, to try and create what you believe will be a great, you know, vessel for the next gem. So, yeah, yeah. I, it's always good to take the best bits from the people you learn from, isn't it? And what a person to have led from. Like she's, she absolutely lived and breathed that role, didn't she? It was her baby. There, it, she, in her words, last, last, last week, it was like a death in the family. <laughs> That's how she described it, losing, like losing so what someone. She said um, she doesn't miss playing or anything about the game, really, other than captaining, him, didn't she? Yeah. She misses captaining yeah. the team. That was uh, quite insightful. Mm. Um. So one last question on the captaincy stuff. What is what has been your proudest moment? so far as captain oh god um <laughs> well i guess aside from like the obvious one like winning the world cup at home after only been a year in captain and i guess dealing with the other things that you have to deal with as a captain at a world cup you've there's so much more going on at icy events you're dragged from pillar to post to pose for ridiculous photographs um, I can't remember what one we did there actually that, but I do remember what, we did one in Australia where we went to like hold koalas and just sort of be <laughs> positioned on different parts of a lake in a zoo and anyway you, you have a lot more pulls on your time I guess as captain in, in world events so I think being able to manage with that quite young um, into my captaincy career was a big one um, and then I guess probably more the, the stuff you don't see I guess like I guess we talked about earlier changing my style a little bit and post-COVID um, using the people around me a little bit more and uh, I guess I'm proud of doing that and, and being able to get the team in a really good place and I, I think that's something you need to do to have longevity like you know as a, as a bowler who's played for a gazillion years for England Brunty you have to keep evolving and adapting and to have that longevity you have to to add things to, to your game and I, I think that's no different for captaincy you have to keep sort of working at it keep trying to add little things keep trying to find ways to be better and um grow the team i guess so yeah i guess that longevity um super proud of of having done it for so long i guess and um had some success with it as well that's wicked nice. now getting away from the playing side of it <clears throat> and away from cricket heather knight more of a human version um your vice chair of the pca and I think you're on some form of committee with Somerset, are you? Yeah, I'm an advisor to the board. Ah, oh, you're an advisor, advisor to the board, okay. I'm advisor on <laughs> Just dishing out advice all over the place. Um, and I did a little bit of research on you. You've got uh, a degree at Cardiff University. By, was it biomedical science? That is correct. Is that right? Google tells So life. intelligent girl. And you've done a master's in, is it sports leadership as well? So, a master in something like that. Um, I know that a few people in cricket are doing those as well, which is fantastic. Um, how's all that helped with um, how you are as a cricketer and on field stuff? Like, have you got the balance in your in your life to you have an idea of the future, what it looks like for you? A little bit. I don't see myself being in a lab coat, that's for sure. So <laughs> the only time I've used that degree is when I had hip surgery two years ago right. and I actually knew what the surgeon was talking about um that's <laughs> that's what uh, nine grand a year gets you you understand what the surgeon's telling you when you're about to go under the knife um yeah I think I, I loved having that I think I think the girls now they're going to be in a pro at sort of 17 18 and you don't get a chance to actually go out and be a normal human as much like develop as a, a non-cricketer I guess and I love that side of my life I loved early in my career being on tour and then coming home and seeing my uni mates and, and having to to cram in loads of assignments that I'd missed and um, yeah. I think it gave me a lot of balance and perspective and rounding I guess before things got really hectic and busy and, and cricket kind of became your sole focus and I guess I've always valued doing a lot of other things outside of the game like uh, 10 years ago, actually, this month, um, I climbed Kilimanjaro and played in the highest ever game of cricket and did a few sort of crazy things like that, which I absolutely loved. I haven't 
had the time to do that sort of thing as much now, which um, probably something I can pick up when I do finish. But um, yeah, did that was you do a the cool challenge? Did you, did you do the bike ride? I did do the PCA bike ride. Me and Lily agreed. Yeah, so we bike. managed three out of five days. We weren't allowed to do the full full amount, but um, <laughs> yeah, I did the bike. Ride. I love doing stuff like that, like just things that are a bit of a challenge. Put you outside your comfort zone you do it with a group of people that you don't know super well and you kind of share that experience and yeah it's something I've really valued like particularly having that group of mates outside of cricket I think that's really important and has probably kept me sane most of the time because like when you're in the bubble of cricket you know Brunty you kind of and Jack like you you think everything's like such a huge deal like you lose a game and it's like someone's died and you just go back to your your mates outside of the game and they don't give a flying f what what's happened they just want to know you're right and want to take the f- out of you and things like that so i've always really valued having that kind of structure outside of cricket i guess and i've always loved doing little things outside of cricket like that kilimanjaro challenge and being involved with with charities and stuff and having a little bit of adventure now and now and again um which is probably few and far between now cricket is is so busy so um yeah, certainly something to pick up again when I do retire. Yeah. That's w- wicked. And you're involved with the PCA, so you're a vice chairman, so I take it you're involved in... How is that for you? Are you involved in big decisions within the game and also with the PCA itself? Are you a champion for them to sort of the young pros coming through who may not know what the PCA actually do for you? Yeah, it's been really cool being involved with the PCA. Um, I, I sort of got more involved around COVID time and... When Rob Lynch took over um, and it felt like women's cricket became one of the real priorities of the PCA, which hadn't really happened before. And it's made such a huge difference, actually, actually the, the amount of um, sort of voices that the PCA have got sort of back in the women's game and, and pushing the people in decision making positions. It's, it's been really important to push the game forward. Um, and yeah, I guess being a part of that has, has been pretty cool. Um and also getting to know how the game works a little bit behind the scenes, like because when you you're playing, you kind of only see the pointy end of it. There's actually a hell of a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Hell of, hell of a lot of different people that have different roles in the game. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's given me a different perspective. I think kept me busy at times, which is is also probably a good thing for me. Um, I'm not really someone to yeah. to sit in my room and and relax and twiddle my thumb. So yeah, I've really enjoyed that kind of getting to know the different side of the game and finding different challenges, I guess, uh, within the game as well. That's excellent. So it's more of a suit role than a track suit role. So do you, do you envisage where your career might take you further in 10 years' time? Do you think you'll be sat in a boardroom or do you think you'll be sat in a dugout? Oh, uh, good question. I don't know, to be honest. I think I've tried to leave my options as open as I can, try and do different things, try different things and... I think probably when I do finish, when I finally hang up the boots, I think my tendency would be to jump into something quickly. But I don't want to do that at all. I want to make sure I at least have a year of just trying a few different things. Uh, me and my partner, Tim, are going to buy a camper van and do a few trips through Europe. And, um, nice. Spot on. Yeah. Scotland. Scotland, definitely. My brother lives up there, so definitely have a, a trip to Scotland in mind. Um, but yeah, I don't know, to be honest, Jack. I'm I'm someone that kind of makes decisions based on my gut and, and how I feel at the time so I've, I've kind of lined up a few things that I might potentially be interested in and then it's it's just about giving them a go seeing what works also having a few holidays seeing family a little bit more uh, family and friends it's, that's sort of kept a lot to the minimum these days with the amount that we travel yeah so um yeah we'll see I'm, yeah. I'm not too sure whether I'll be in a boardroom or not I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I don't really see myself doing that kind of structured job because i'm quite big on managing my own time and doing what i want a little bit really so i think i might find that quite hard to to have a proper employer it is when um, nat used to come back to tour and she'd be like oh shall we go on holiday abroad and i'm like i don't want to pack another suitcase i don't want to go on another airplane i just quite like to be in my home for more than five minutes um, and do some laundry and yeah you know remember what it's like to be a hume. Do you laundry? What, what do you mean? I hate doing laundry. It's great on tour. You just you stick it in a bag and it comes back smelling beautiful and flowers. But there's nothing worse than being on tour, somebody doing your laundry and it coming back two sizes smaller every time. 
because to get it back in 24 hours equals boil drying. Um, anyway, so any, any of our listeners out there who are pro cricketers or even amateur looking to be pro, don't forget our one of our guests, uh, Katie George, went to the Futures Conference when she was 23, 4, was it, Jack? She said last year, didn't she, 24. Um, so there's never, ever... a a perfect or good time to go just any time you don't have to be 30 and i'm thinking about retirement or 35 that's whatever just go it's worth going what could you lose you can only learn so that's the 6th till the uh, 7th of november coming up so get yourself on the list guys i went and yes i've been myself and i have spoken there and both times i found it enlightening um great and it's also just nice to be with people who are in the same boat as you or keen to learn so get there and that's all i've got to say about that <laughs> are you on commission for that every pro you get to go you get a little cut <laughs> absolutely not but it does the one thing that disappoints me about the futures conference is the lack of people going um and that's the problem and that sometimes the shock that you can have as a retire retired player is what do I do next oops I should have done something 10 years ago it, there's it's never too soon to like when is it think about it? your future when is it six or seventh of November um abroad sorry can't make it but you know you'll be in the snow and wind and rain and she said what's the worst that can happen you get a free meal and a nice <laughs> hotel room so there you go um Jack Shall we go on to the PCV? Oh my goodness, PCA MVP. Update. Yeah, I'll give a little quick Marvel. update. I've just got one quick question, um, mainly for for Trev, but maybe you can answer. What was it like playing against each other, by the way? <laughs> oh, Catherine was awful playing against me. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I had a mouthful of water then. <laughs> um, I can't say I'm the most pleasant person to play against, but I think I bring the best out of um, every individual. That's my positive. Right. Okay. <laughs> easy yeah, easy okay. to wind yeah, yeah. up. She was. Yeah, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, I made Tammy who she was. We had, we had some good battles over the over the years, didn't we? Like way back in the day, yep. Yorkshire versus Berkshire. We're good old. Yeah, the Beavers. The Beavers. Up the Beavers. Um, what a great time to be alive. That was. Yeah, it was. Berkshire Beavers. Yeah, neither um, of us th- like losing Jack. Well, uh, yes, none of us do. Do they? Do we? No. Sorry. That's why we're professional sports people, isn't it? Gotta like winning. Gotta was it hate losing more than you like winning? Um anyway, PCA MVP update. The Metro Bank One Day Cup came to a conclusion yesterday on its reserve day. Uh with Glamorgan uh winning it by 15 runs against Somerset, who ended up finishing uh second in the blast, second and then the um currently second in the championship. They could end up finishing lower. And, and second in the Metro Bank. Ed Barnard claimed his second consecutive One Day Cup Player of the Year award. He got a, a lot of points. Uh, and then heading into the last round of the County Championship, uh, Liam Dawson, who was my favourite at the beginning of the season, leads the way. And he's also leading the men's overall MVP charts with a whopping 611 points. I think he's got, in two or three matches this year, he scored 100 and a five for in the same game. Like, he's just, yeah, he's dominant. He can't lose that, can he? He's been a freak again for second yeah, in a row. And also, loving the fact that Glamorgan won straight after an episode with Tom Smith. So that was great. Huh? We were, Gloucester. Wasn't it? Gloucester, you mean? Oh, Gloucester my God. Won the... Yeah, yeah, sorry. The, um, Gloucester the won the blast. blast. That's yeah. what I meant. That worked well for us, that... didn't it? Another guest being successful. It's How Hev's, Hev's going to bring home the Aren't World Cup. Lucky child. Yeah. There you go. We have actually only been lucky. Um, we were talking to Katie George, and then she got picked up for England. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. England, well, yeah, England, actually, in Ireland. So, mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, in the women's game, Rachel Hey Ho Flint Trophy, such a mouthful, uh, was won by the Sunrisers, which is fabulous because it's always nice to have a new winner. We don't like... Dog. Yeah, we never liked, you know, uh, the Vipers always winning and then, you know... My old diamonds got one in the bag, and then, and now the sunrises are at it, which is fabulous. Um, and the um, player of the year, Alice Davidson Richards. There's so many mouthfuls going on, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. And she had she's released a really touching story, actually, um, and you can check that out on socials. And she's talking about 
her dad passing. Um, we've had a lot of talked a lot about grief, haven't we, this season? And um, yeah. yeah, that's related to the Alzheimer's Society. Um, so worth a worth a watch. Anybody who has had grief or anything like that in the family is a, a moving story, and she was very brave. And um, and the fact that she's come away with Player of the Year be a nice little top to her season. So. Um, in other, in other news, the overall women's MVP is none other than our Catherine Bryce from Scotland. So she beat the filthy Aussie Amanda Jade Wellington um, and kicked her fellow Scottish last uh, Kirsty Gordon into second. So, um, yeah, well done all. Brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Um, one week left of the season. Now, Cricket Archive guest stat alert with Siren... <laughs> Now, <laughs> Heather, I'm not sure if you're aware of this stat, but you are second on the list of women's appearances in T20 matches as captain behind Meg Lanning on 2-3-3. You are creeping up on 2-1-5. Is it something that you were aware of or you're bothered about? <laughs> uh, no, I did not know that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know that, I would have been worried. But, I mean, now we've told you that's... 18 more to go, I mean, surely, because, you know... Well, I've got to that would not be just to get that niche record. Yeah, yeah. you've yeah. yeah. got to beat because she's Australian for a start. Was that the only the one you could one. find that was near the top? Is that, is that why it's quite niche? <laughs> <laughs> it's just something just to give you a gentle nudge to keep going. Oh, OK. So, you know, if yeah, you're thinking of can. racking anything, then don't, basically. Um, just blame Tom. He... I think he likes a variety in, st in stats. It's a good, it's a good bit of stat. I like it. Um, now, under the list, big, que big question. Uh, as our listeners know, the show is all about getting the truth behind the life as a professional cricketer. And every week we ask this question. We'd like to know something a bit quirky, maybe not something that everyone knows about you. Um, is there anything quirky that <laughs> well, no one really knows I was, was going to say the Kilimanjaro the Guinness World Record holder one, but I've already given that away, haven't I? Well, I think there's been a few. You were head chef at a care home. You've climbed Kilimanjaro and played cricket. Yeah, to be fair, they're pretty good. What about your feet? <laughs> I'm not saying about my feet. She hasn't got any. Um, haven't got any feet. No, I haven't got any feet. I've got cold feet. Um, I gave the Dalai Lama a high five once. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. He gave me a kiss on the nose. A what on the nose? Boop. A little kiss on the nose. Oh, was it a... Did he? I don't think he kissed you on the nose, mate. He kissed no, your nose. Was... <laughs> That's a hell it was of a either thing a little, It was either a little boop or a little kissy. I've got the photo, but, you know, my memory's not what it used just to be. grabbed you. <laughs> you can just imagine the Dalai Lama going... <laughs> yeah, I would have been Kissing like... Kissing your nose. Come here. <laughs> yeah, it was great, that. That was surreal. Okay, moving on. Uh, finally, the last round, which is our quiz, Heather, which I'm not sure if you're aware of. Um, but there is a prize if you finish top of the leaderboard. And as you are last guest, um, if whatever you score, if you go top, no one can overtake you. But Tammy Beaumont is currently top on nine. Oh, God, it's on, it's on stats um, then, is it? Because if Tammy's top, I'm sure he's... It's um, a little... Well, it's cricket-related questions. Basically, you've got 60 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. Correct answers go as runs. Um, if you don't know the answer, please just tell us to pass so we can ask quick fire questions. Tammy was actually good at that. Um, so you've got 60 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. Right, three, two, one. What is your highest score in T20 International? 108. Lovely. How many test matches have you played in? 12. 10, 12, or 14? Ooh, fantastic. How many runs did you score in the 2019 Super League final? 76. We'll give you that. Have you got more ODI wickets uh, or WBBL wickets? Mm, ODI. Correct. Your, your highest test score of 168 not out came at which venue? That was at Canberra. Correct. Name one other English player to score a century in all three formats, male or female. Josh Butler. Correct. How many runs did you score on your England debut versus India? 49. Absolute bottle job. Fabio. How many WBBL titles have the Sydney Thunder won? All with me in it or with the whole team? All together. Uh, two? Correct. <laughs> Who is the PCA rep from the Western Storm? Sophie Love. Correct. Who ha one more. Who has played in one in more eyes, you or me? Me.
Correct. One four three oh, versus bugger. one four one. Boom, we've got a winner. Unlucky Tammy. You won the prize. An absolute Take- winner. We saved the best for last, Jack. <laughs> um, do you know what the prize is, Heather? I don't know if, you, if you're aware or not. Um, it's um, five five hundred pound J Lindenberg voucher. Oh, boom! Unlucky Tammy. So <laughs> I thought I thought I just got like, just the pat on the back. PCA no, social media get- post. No, you, you get, whole, get that whole voucher. outfit now. Oh, great. They, yeah, they do male and female apparel, so get yourself up. Lovely. Lovely job. Get geared up, kitted out. Um, we'll let you go now, Heather, because I know you're a, a, a busy person, captain of the England cricket team, England women's cricket team, and you're uh, you're away on camp at the minute. But thanks very much for stopping by. Thanks for being a fabulous guest, last one of the series for us. Uh, good luck for the tournament. Bring that trophy home. Thanks, we'll guys. Enjoy your holiday. See you soon, Brenty. There we go. Our final guest done of the series. Done. Lovely. And she's a belter. Good girl. We have, and we saved the best for last for the quiz. Well, for the quiz, yeah, that was um, unbelievable. She flew through. Everything Never over right. till it's over. That girl, as you know, she's got a biomedical degree. Yeah, retains information girl. pretty well. Memory mm. of an elephant. Is that the correct one? <laughs> uh, yeah, goldfish or yes. elephant. So Not goldfish. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. I mean, she's got a little bit of badger in herself, but it's mainly that she's just too smart for her own good. So well done, Hev. Great chat. Yeah, thanks very much. Now, moving on to feedback before we wrap up. We've got some good bits of feedback this week. One from Itaka Thakor. Congratulations to the Siver Brunts. What wonderful news. Yeah, it is. And I'm so happy for you in that, and I hope you are glowing, Catherine, and not vomiting. <laughs> Sadly, no the vomit. podcast is coming to an end. I just loved every episode and the banter between you both. And I hope the pod gets renewed for another season. Thanks for the entertainment, guys. You're That's welcome. Lovely. Cheers. Um, yeah, I met her and her partner in um, the women's IPL. They were great. Okay. Very lovely people. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for okay. being such an avid follower. Um, I am not being sick. I'm actually having a breeze of it at this current moment in time but you know these things can change <laughs> so let's <Yeah>. not <laughs> jinx it um yeah charlotte edwards last week uh, mark brilliant questions and discussion from the great cricketer slash coach charlotte edwards and anna wow what a surprise guest yeah we i mean we like that's what we could do next year it doesn't always have to be a play you know it can be a coach Past player, legend. a legend. legend. Yeah, we could get Alex Stewart on here, couldn't we? Jack, you can make that happen. I reckon um, I could work something, yeah. Winter one, yeah. we have a, a bonus winter episode, can we? Now and again. Yeah, but this is where the feedback comes in, guys. So you let us know what you want and we'll try to deliver. So that's what we do around here. Excellent. But before we wrap up, um, but I am pleased to say we're going to have a best bits episode for Under the Lid listeners coming soon. Um there's been so many. I literally, I couldn't even tell you where to start. I wouldn't want to be the producer putting that together because um, <laughs> it would be a very long show otherwise. It could just be a lot of you swearing. Um, but, yeah, if, um, <laughs> but we could, uh, <laughs> uh, if anyone's got any comments or any more feedback for us, then feel free to still chuck it our way at hashtag under the lid. It all get um, taken on board. Um, email at hello under uk, but do not f- forget to subscribe and like and tell all your friends um well that's been an emotional journey 26 weeks the season's been fab a lot's happened um a lot's happened for me and brunty this summer as well in the wide world of playing or uh, well, not playing anymore um and life's life moving life is moving forward quickly massive news uh massive congrats to you uh, and that um maybe next time we hear from you on this pod you may well be a mother um yes so yeah good luck the rest of the winter mate we'll stay in touch um thank you everyone for listening and i hope we'll be back for series two yes now go and sit back on that beach jack get the cocktail in hand and enjoy your holidays thank Come you everybody bye bye